Hello there girls and boys, um, it seems that this thing is working, yeah, it's finally working, so sorry for any hiccup that you have to deal or endure uh, while you were waiting for me. So, as stated in the thumbnail, we are going to be discussing tonight, um, well, I'm going to be mixing a song for you girls and boys in front of you girls and boys, and I decided to put this title in the likes of ambient music. Uh, because uh, in reality, this is this is a, this is a song that I wrote for a soundtrack uh, that I made for a for a trailer uh, that I can't give you more information about it at least uh, at, at the time being. Uh, in this song, it's gonna we're gonna be discussing several uh, several elements. Uh, this is much more of, of an ambient sounding track, but also uh, it wa it is comprised of basically uh, only electronic instruments. So it was made using synthesizers and drone machines. The interesting part is that all of those synthesizers were uh, virtual instruments. So yes, they are that good. And even I like to use them from, from time to time. So without further ado, let's get into it. Beth, uh, if this is the first time that you are joining us in this live stream, I welcome you. And let's get into the inner sanctum now. So as I said before, it's time to hit it. As usual, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to listen to the track uh, as it is. I just I already uploaded uh, the track uh, into the Logic session, and the brown channels are my uh, my drum machine, the bass, and all of these guys are synthesizers. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna press play and see what we got. Here we go. Okay, it's sounding cool actually, and even even though this is the first step into the mixing process, the mi mix itself is already sounding like a like a real mix. Uh, but there are several things that have to be addressed before we move forward. The first one is that it's an extremely busy mix. We have plenty of stuff going on. Uh, we're dealing with several elements that even though we don't have that many channels in this mix, let me go back to Logic. Uh, we're dealing with uh, something in the, in the likes of 12 tracks, to be specific. And uh, even though we only have that little amount of uh, elements in the song, uh, the sound is quite busy. Why? I'm glad that you didn't ask. Well, the, it's because we got this thing that it, I called Atmos, which is this little... Which is quite cool sounding. The only issue, let me just confirm that you can keep, you can hear my, yeah, you can listen to my voice even even when I solo the tracks. Uh, the thing is that whenever I, 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 I press play, this Atmos thing, uh, it's uh, annoying the sound of the bass because both of them are kind of uh, sharing some sort of the same frequency range. And also, both of them have this kind of uh, pattern going on. So, the the first thing that we're going to do is, uh, we're going to uh, first gain a stage, as usual. We're going to uh, start with the kick drum and the and the, the snare and stuff. So, here we go. Let's get rid of all of the different tracks at the moment. And we're going to just uh, leave uh, room for the bass and, and drums here we go drums first
interesting. This is interesting also, boys, because we are using two different elements to enhance the sound of the snare. We got the snare sound, of course, but also we got a clap. And actually, I like the sound of the clap over the sound of the snare. So I think I'm gonna leave the snare a little bit uh, 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 behind, a little bit behind the, the clap, and the clap is gonna be the main sound, the main source of our sound for the snare. So here we go. Hi-hats extremely high. Yes, I know, that was a really, really bad joke, but you get it. For those of you who are familiar with this channel, girls and boys, uh, um, you already know that I like to use this plugin. This is uh, Track Spacer, and it's a really cool plugin that allows me to uh, to uh, basically speaking, to uh, go up uh, to, to control the amount of um, of stuff that happens uh, regarding the the combination of both the. Give me a second. Okay, we got an issue here. You can't see the plugin, so let's change it. So regrow some voice. Okay, now you should be able to see the plugin. Here it is, perfect. Now you see it. Let me just, uh, yeah, there. Sorry about this issue, girls and boys. So now, now you see the plugin. So this is uh, Track Spacer, which is, uh, uh, basically speaking, it's just like a, like a gate of some sorts, which allows me to control the amount of bass going through uh, and I have it uh, being controlled by the kick drum, so that way I can control the amount of uh, bass that it's being played at the same time uh, whenever the, the, the kick drum is hitting, so that way we can control the relationship between both of those elements. So here we go, we're gonna start, or start a little bit higher, so you can hear the difference, and I'm gonna go low, lower, 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 so, so we find the sweet spot. As you could hear, as soon as I, I turn it on, the kick bay, the kick drum was starting to be a little bit more louder without even pull, pull, uh, moving any further, and the sound itself was was more focused and much more powerful in general. One thing before we continue, uh, this kick drum and the whole uh, the whole um, the whole sound of the of the drum machine was created using the built-in uh, drum machine that comes with Logic Pro. So yeah, it's that good. And uh, the rest of the instruments, if I remember correctly, were using, were made using uh, contact, no contact, not uh, reactor for the bass, the piano, and the and the reverse piano were made using contact by Natrium Instruments and Atmos and uh, the other path. I can't remember to tell you the truth because that project was made like uh, one, like two months ago, so it's hard, it's kind of hard to remember. So whatever. Uh, so now let's see how it sounds like with the whole mix. Okay, this is interesting. The piano and the reverse piano should be together and we're gonna see how loud both of them have to go, how to be. So let's go over here. The reverse sounded, but there has to be the difference has to be really, really, really tiny because it is that the the reverse sound should come before the the hit of the of the piano happens. Almost there. Okay, good. 
So first thing first, it's now that we got this uh, kind of balance in our mix, it's time to start messing around with the sounds. So the first thing to do is going to be uh, uh, working on the kick drum, because that's the way to go. And uh, we're going to use the my trusty and extremely beloved uh, SSL uh, equalizer, because that's like that's the one I like. And this is a nice trick, girls and boys. Whenever you are mixing, it's it's my recommendation is always to use the uh, plugins that you are much more familiar with. Otherwise, you're just gonna be trying to chase the rabbit instead of coming up with that with a great sound. So here we go. First, let's get rid of some of the math. Super low end. Nice. Now let's see, let's add some more uh, power to the sound, to the kick drum. Okay, what I did there was um, I, try, I, I was chasing and trying to find the, the frequency that was the much more important of that, of that sound. I was trying to, chase, to, trying to find the, the fundamental frequency of that kick drum. So, and, I, and I think it's something the likes of 100 and something hertz. So that's the reason why I, I was uh, first swimming, trying to find the, the right frequency and then got rid of all of this, all of the added. Uh, decibels to that uh, frequency and then add it little by little yeah hello there Panke it's good to see you here so hopefully oh yeah yeah it sounds like that it sounds like that yeah this is this is exactly what he says so yeah thank you for your beautiful and important contribution Panke you're making you're making your country proud and, and made in, making a huge change to this world uh, and, and to the cl climate change in particular so here we go <laughs> okay so uh, here we go. Now what we're gonna do, it's, it sounds a little bit too muddy, uh, so the only way to get rid of it is trying to find the nasty frequency, the one that it's uh, adding the boxiness to the sound. So I'm gonna solo the, the kick drum and... As a reference, without. With. Huge difference. Now I think we need to add a little bit more of, uh, of the renowned Genesis Equem. And the only way to do it is by adding some more uh, higher end to the sound of the kick drum. You might be wondering why would, do we have to add that? And uh, that's a great question, and I'm glad that you didn't ask. The reason why we need to add that, uh, that high air end to the click drum is to add more, uh, much more definition to the sound of the kick, so it's easier for it to cut through the mix. So the way to do it is by uh, finding the right frequency, as usual. So here we go. Let's do it. Nice, we got it. Uh, the reason why I knew why, uh, th that it was going to happen in that in that particular frequency range is because years and years of experience. So remember, girls and boys, uh, the only way to improve is by practicing. So always practice, no matter what. So now we are facing another issue. The bass drum is not uh, the, the kick drum is um, is not as punchy as I would like it to be. So it's time to add some analog compression. Yes, I know I am a fancy kid. So we're gonna use uh, analog compression now. So 
we're gonna be using this guy in particular. This is the this is the the compressor that we'll be using. Let me point the camera to, to it. So here we go. Let's first of all we have to find unity gain, which stands for uh, we have to find the, the the balance between the sound affected by the compressor and the, the sound without the compressor. So it has to be exactly the same volume. Let's get rid of the compression uh, circuit. So here we go. Okay, we got unity gain, but it's now a time to add uh, the renowned Regina Sequoia. And the only way to do it is by changing the parameter in the compressor. So I, I think that I want to use something slow because uh, I want to get more of the attack rather than just compressing the attack. Because what we want is to make it feel a little bit more punchier. That way we're going to make it sound uh, fatter and we're going to add more power and more low end to our mix. So let's do it by adding compression. So here we go. I like it. Now we got a really beefy sound. So now the problem is that the um, the bass it's annoying me a little bit because it's not working the way it should in relationship with the kick. So let's equalize it. This is the the one that I like to use, but probably since we're dealing with a different kind of bass, I don't think that this equalizer is gonna is gonna cut it. So let's change it. Let's see. Hmm. Which one would you like to use, Panke? We got plenty of uh, equalizers here, so I think that I I feel like we need something in the likes of uh, yes, the Pasek EQ, which is kind of a Pultec style equalizer. Here we go. Nice, I like it. What I did here was uh, first I cut some of the frequencies uh, uh, on the lower side, on the lower side of the spectrum, uh, on the base of the on the base drum, on, on the base uh, sound. So we allowed the the kick drum to cut through the mix uh, in a easier in an easier fashion, and it worked. Then I added some more frequencies, uh, some more power to the low end frequencies. I know I said that I cut it first, but then I added more sound to it. Why? Because it was the idea was just to let the, the kick drum go through and then make the sound of the bass more powerful. And we got this powerful sound now. But now it's time to add compression. So once again, we're hitting. Yeah, actually it has that, that, that kind of sound, uh, Panky. When I was writing this song, I was thinking of... Um, uh, what's the name of this band? Yeah, Ulver. If you haven't heard of Ulver, uh, those guys released that 
album that at the beginning I didn't like, which was the assassination of Julius Caesar. But then after a few uh, after a few plays through, I started to like it, and then it became one of my favorite albums. It's a really interesting uh, musical endeavor, and it's kind of a hotline Miami style of music, but it's way darker, much more uh, moody, and much more interesting to say the least. So. Now we're gonna add some uh, compression to the bass. Once again, we're gonna go to the fancy realm of analog gear. We are gonna use now channel number two, and let's get rid of the of the um, of the compressors uh, circuit first, and then we're gonna first find unity gain, and then the usual. So here we go. Sorry girls and boys, we're using channel number three. My mistake. Here we go. Okay, we got unity gain, but now it's time to add compression. This is how the compressor system works. When I add gain, the, the bigger the amount of gain is, the bigger the amount of compression happens. It's a super simple compressor. And in here, in level, on level, we're controlling the amount of signal that goes out of the compressor. So, and in here, we change the sound of the compressor by changing the way that it's working. This amazing circuit allows me to use a transistor-based circuit or a tube-based uh, circuit or a combination of both. The difference between each of them is that the transistor-based is a little bit more uh, the, 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 the dynamics, uh, not the, the dynamics, more, much more like the, the transient detection is way more smoother, it's, it's, where, it's, it's, more, it's more precise in a way, and the tube system, it's a, a much more uh, smooth, it's a smoother sound. So it's more like a like a vintage sound, which is good. Let's see which one uh, works the best for us. In my opinion, tube is gonna be the way to go. So let's give it a listen. I like it. Now it's time to engage the 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 the, the uh, compressor system. Let's give it a shot first with fast. Fast is gonna compress the signal at the very moment that it happens. So let's see what happens. But since we are mixing music, not just a bass. Uh, we have to mix it in context. So here we go with the whole mess. Nice, 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 nice. I really like it. Now it's time to add some more. Um, uh, oh. Done. So now it's time to add some more, uh, some more ambience because we got a, an, an already uh, a steady sounding track. So first, let's work on the snare drum and the claps. First the snare. But if you're like me, you're already getting tired of that section. So let's change. Let's go from here. So we get a little bit of an idea of what we are getting into. Let's add some reverb. Tons of reverb. Okay, that's a lot of reverb. That was ridiculous, but...
Okay, we need to, to get a much more defined sound for these uh, claps. So the way to go is gonna be this. Enter the virtual mix rack. First thing to do is gonna be adding a ton of distortion in the form of this guy. Here we go. The idea is to add distortion. Distortion is quite good whenever you are dealing with a clap uh, because uh, what we want is the, is the nitty gritty sound of the that happens. So here we go. Okay, now um, the snare is starting to feel a little bit lost into the mix. So the way to do, to do it is by, uh, first of all, opening up an equalizer, getting rid of the ultra low end, because yes, even the snares have, have, to be, have to get cleaned up. And then we are gonna add much more bottom end to the snare. Yes, I know girls and boys that I said that we have to get rid of the low end, but we also have to add some weight to the sound. And the only way to do it is by adding some low end. So I'm gonna solo the sound of the snare and let's go to an area where we get plenty of snares. So I think this is the place. So once again, let's find our sound. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. Something like this, hopefully it's gonna work. In context. A little bit too annoying, so let's get let's lower down the volume. Hey all Capri, great to see you here. So here we go. Okay, nice. Now I need a little bit more of a higher end on the on the higher on the on the snare because it's not it's not as point as it should and it's getting lost in the mix so the way to do it is by first of all getting rid of the boxiness because i can't stand this the boxy sound of the snare so this is the usual suspect if you are familiar with the with this channel and if you know me you know that i hate uh passionately uh 250k Sorry, 250 hertz. I don't know why, but I can't stand that frequency. So it's usually something like this in the likes of this. And you will see that afterwards, we're going to have a wonderful sound. As a reference. There is something about that frequency range that it's always messing our human ears. Now, uh, let's add some more... Uh, vibe. Let's add some air in the form of high end information. Let's see what happens if we add some 5k. Now uh, we're we're getting in, we're getting there, we're getting there, but we need a little bit more uh, verb. So we're gonna add some reverb to the snare drum bat. We're gonna use a different reverb. The th this time around we're gonna be using this one. If you're familiar with the way that I like to work, I am a huge fan of uh, Slate Digital products, and this guy it's one of my uh, always present uh, reverbs. This is the Verb Suite Classic. So let's listen to it. Uh, I'm gonna be adding little by little to the sound of the snare. I'm gonna solo it first so you can have an idea of how it's gonna be uh, mo uh, modifying the sound of the snare and then we can decide if we like it or not. Mm 
there is a huge problem right now. It's adding too much high end energy, which I can't stand. So let's change the sound of the equalizer, internal equalizer. Now let's see what happens if we uh, add it to the mix. Let me see what was the issue here. So that's good. So as you heard, we got a nice and rounded uh, snare sound thanks to the uh, the addition of the reverb. So now next step. Mm. Those hi hats are quite annoying. So the first thing to do is going to be adding some uh, f some f uh, ambience to the sound of those um, hi hats in the shape of reverb. Here we go. Nice, I like it. The same it's gonna be applied to the uh, piano and this is gonna be the interesting part of this mix because the piano is, is one of the most important sounds of this track. First, the reverse piano. This sound, it's really good and nice and awesome. But I think that it's a little bit lackluster. So I'm gonna, mm, first of all, what can I do? What can I do? Let's add some more reverb, but in the way of this. I'm gonna first tame down a little bit the frequencies of the... Let's get rid of some of the lower end energy. Just like that. And now let's add a reverb here. Which one? I would say that I'm gonna use round. I've been falling in love with this reverb for the last few months, actually. And if you haven't heard it, uh, heard this reverb in, in um, haven't haven't ha don't, don't have an idea of how it sounds like. I already have a video on the YouTube channels uh, that you can check. Uh, it's me explaining how to use it and and telling you why it's so important for you to have it. It's a really awesome reverb sound and. This is why I love it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, but the thing is that let's see how it sounds with the rest of the mess. Cool. Now I think we need um, more, much more fun. So I'm going to use this. Ultra channel. This is a channel strip, as the name implies. But the cool thing about it is that it's full of really nice bells and whistles. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to compress uh, quite a lot the signal because we want to control the 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 happenings inside of it, but without uh, making it, squashing it so much that the sound it's almost basically the same sound. So let's see what happens. This is important, girls and boys, this is a nice trick. You might be wondering why on earth did you decided to put the compressor right after the reverb? And I'm glad that you didn't ask, but the reason is it's actually quite interesting. What I wanted to do with this is to control and to tame down the sound of the, of the reverb by compressing the whole signal. That way we can have the sound coming into the reverb circuit 
the effect being applied to the whole thing and then with the compression we are rising up the level of the of the of the river without having to modify the attack of the sound at the beginning of the signal hopefully you understood what i tried what i said here it's a nice trick it's simple to it's simple to follow and basically speaking once again what i did with this is extending the tail of the reverb without changing the sound of the of the of the original source so that's the reason why we got an extended sound. Now we're gonna uh, equalize a little bit the sound of the of the whole thing by using this equalizer that it's built in inside of uh, Ultra Channel. And once again, we're gonna modify a little bit the the we're gonna get rid of some of the low end energy. a tiny bit of high end too much now we're talking now let's see what we get here It seems that there is an issue with one of my cables, it's not a problem. So, we got this thing running. And now, one final trick. We're gonna add this, micro pitch shift. Which is a kind of a quasi reverb slash a phaser slash a modulation effect. You will see why I'm gonna use it as soon as I press play. We're gonna just try to, we're just gonna make it sound a little bit wider. Okay, so here we go. This is the micro shift. Nice. And now the, the, the last part of this uh, sound is going to be the piano sound. And here we're going to just um, control the dynamics by using this guy. And I'm going to use the FNG, FGN uh, module. So because I love, I love the sound of this module, uh, particularly whenever I'm, using a, I'm, I'm dealing with a piano. Because this module is quite powerful, the equalizer is extremely powerful. As soon as you turn it up, you're gonna get a completely different sound. So here we go. Awesome. Now some reverb, because every piano needs some reverb, and we're gonna use some. Let's use the just a plate. See what happens. I like it. I don't feel like we need to compress that piano. So now let's work on the Atmos synthesizer, which is this kind of little... Um... If you ever played uh, Donkey Kong Country, you might be familiar with this, with this kind of sound, because I was inspired by it when I was writing this piece of music. Yes, Donkey Kong Country was one of the best video games on the Super Nintendo. Yes, I am an old fart. I I I, I am still in love with that uh, with that era of video gaming because it's the only era of video gaming that I really like. Uh, and also the music from those games were amazing. If you if you have seen the video, if you, if you haven't seen the video, I made a recreation of one of those tracks from that era of video games uh, on their YouTube channel. It's from the Mega Man X series, and you should check it out. But wherever. We're dealing with this mix. So here we go. All 
Okay, this is gonna be tough because we got plenty of things going on. First and foremost, we have to get rid of this. Once again, lower end. And also the e, the compression. We want the attack to be clear and loud, but we don't want to uh, extend the sound of the tail because we're gonna be mudding and we're just gonna be throwing more mud to the, to the cesspit. So in order to clear that up, we're gonna use compression and we're gonna have a really slow attack and a fast release. That way we're gonna be bam bam. David Wise, yeah, that was the name of the composer. He is a really talented guy, and you should check his you should check his uh, his uh, back catalog because that was the guy who wrote uh, most of the soundtracks for those video games. And believe me, those soundtracks were amazing, extremely extremely well crafted. Even though we were dealing with a really uh, archaic. Uh, sound system which was the one the chip that was used by the Super Nintendo and I still have it fresh in my mind because I, I made that video last week and the funny thing is that the Super Nintendo was only able to reproduce mo no more than uh, eight voices at the same time if I remember correctly so just to mind that so here we go I want you girls and boys to pay close attention to the way that, uh, that the sound is going to be affected by this compressor. Comp compressor sorry. Uh, please listen and pay close attention to the sound of the attack. That's what we are dealing with. The difference is starting to be noticeable as soon as I, 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 I start with, I engage the compressor system. So, once again, the attack. It's on now. As soon as I turn it off, the sound starts to get muddier. Once again, we are not even doing anything with the, with the equalizer. This is all about compression and it's making a huge difference to the sound. So I'm gonna turn it on and let's see how it sounds like in the rest of the mix. <laughs> that was good actually. Now uh, we are dealing with these synthesizers. Sorry if I get cocky, but damn it, that was a huge improvement. Uh, why? Well, now we can hear basically, well, not basically, every single one of the instruments, every one of those elements of the mix can be heard without any issue and it starts to sound like a record. Now we got this issue here, which is this path. It's a little bit too much energy. It's good, it's cool, but it's covering most of the frequency range. And if you don't believe me, let me show it to you. I'm gonna turn this on. This is gonna be an analyzer applied to this path. So we got the frequency range. This is the lower end and this is the higher end of our frequency range. The one that we as human can uh, hear. So here we go. As you could, uh, even there. The first thing that it's coming to my mind is that we get a lot of, a little bit of too much high end energy in this sound, which is not ideal because that area is being already covered by the snare and the hi hats and all of those guys. So before we continue moving forward, I would like you to, in to invite you to go to Instagram and follow us over there because that's the best way to uh, join the conversation. And also that's the best way to be informed about everything regarding the band and everything that happens inside of our musical journey. And also if you haven't heard any of our music, that's the best way to go. Uh, Spotify, of course. And uh, 
Uh, if you follow us over there, it's the best way to support this channel, and that way we can continue uh, outputting this amazing content. Well, at least I hope that it, you find it amazing, or at least any good for you, girls and boys. So, with that being said, let's get back to the mix. So, as I said before, we are gonna first get rid of some of the higher end uh, pouring in. But this time around, I'm gonna be using a different equalizer, and it's gonna be in the form of the infinite... EQ, which is a great equalizer made once again by Slate Digital. So why I like this sound, this synth, it's simply because it allowed me to solo the frequency that I want to deal with. So here we go. Cool. I think we got a really nice sound. So let's listen to it uh, in context, just a little bit further back. Okay, now it's time to add something else, which is gonna come in the form of Dr. MS, which is, um, it's kind of a complex circuit, but what we're gonna do with it, we're gonna uh, widen up the sound of the mix, and we're gonna try to control, well, not, not, not that we're gonna try, we're gonna control the sound of the mids, of the, of the mid information, which is gonna be everything that is coming right in the center of the, of the, of the mix, and we're gonna allow all of the information that goes to the sides, which is the the pads and all of those uh, synthesizers, uh, to be a little bit wider. That way, we're gonna open up the space for the kick drum and the snare. So here we go. So we're gonna first set our trusty loop in the busiest area of the track which is this one, and let's give it a listen. Also here we got this ta, 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 ta. it has to be super loud. Why? Because that's the way I like it. It has to be loud. So we're gonna automate that clap. Probably it's gonna be too much. <laughs> Louder. Okay, it's time to give it a, a listen to the whole track. Here we go.
Right, so there you have it, girls and boys. Uh, this is just the beginning of this mix, because actually we still have plenty of uh, stuff uh, to deal with in the likes of the stereo mix bus, which is one of the most important parts of, uh, of every single mix. But we have already reached the final stage of this, of this live stream. I am glad that you showed up and I loved you to be here. And let me get rid of the headphones because it's usually kind of annoying to, to wear headphones for so long. Yeah, so uh, before uh, before uh, coming to you, girls and boys, I was I was in in a, in, a, in a conversation with one of my friends over over on Instagram, and uh, we were talking about how or why uh, I started this whole initiative of uh, the live stream, uh, the Inner Sanctum initiative, which is this live stream, and the whole the whole game on YouTube. And the reason is um, it's interesting because uh, since many of you may not know. Uh, I am also a music producer, obviously, it shows, uh, but so far in my career I have been, uh, I have, uh, so many people have asked me and, and so many people have shown interest in learning how, um, wanting me to tell them or to show them how I write my music and how, I, how we produce our music here in Barden. So after many questions I decided to, to do something about it and I came up with this, but here's why. It's not. It's. It, this is not because I want to show you, to show off my my skills as a as a music producer or, or as a mixing engineer. It's because I think that every musician nowadays have to be able to mix, record, and produce their tracks by their own. Don't necessarily you, you don't necessarily have to be a professional mixer or a professional mixer producer or to to have a proper uh, mixing uh, a proper musical career in this day and age. But you have to be able at least to create and to write your music or to lay down the foundation of your ideas, musical ideas. And the best way to do it is by learning. And also it's always good for you to have a, to have a, some form of vocabulary. That way you can have access to a much more interesting conversation with whatever is, whoever is working with you uh, while producing your own tracks. So this is important. That's the very reason why we decided to start this, this uh, initiative in this YouTube channel. Yeah, so as every single time, girls and boys, I would like you to invite you to be part of this journey by following us on social media such as Instagram or Facebook and also following us on Spotify makes a huge difference because that's the best way to support the channel just by listening to our music and sharing uh, all of this stuff with your best friends and uh, comrades and, and brothers in arms, brothers and sisters, because why not? Thank you very much, Manke, for joining us and... As every single time that I meet you girls and boys, I gotta tell you something. Don't let anybody tell you what to dream about. And I will see you when I see you.